I designed my own luxury mechanical keyboard entirely from scratch. From sketching the initial concept, I CAD modeled it, designed a PCB, prototyped, and manufactured it. Introducing the Summit. Without question, designing a keyboard is a long and time-consuming process. One might raise the question, with so many nice keyboards readily available on the market, what's the point of designing your own? There can be several reasons as to why one might want to. In the past, my reasoning was just to challenge myself to make a unique project that pushes my capabilities and skills. There's nothing wrong with that, but in the case for the summit, I wanted to dig deeper. For a bit of backstory, as some of you may know, I'm a big fan of the HHKB layout. If you're unfamiliar with what this is, I made a video talking about what makes it so special. In short, it's a derivative of the 60% layout, with its most notable feature being the corner blockers in place of where the typical control keys go. This layout is by far my favorite keyboard layout that has ever existed, but the problem is that it's not very popular. I think the main reason why is because people are either too afraid or too uncomfortable to get used to its alternate position of certain keys like control and backspace. Because of this, there's a lack of pure HHKB layout keyboards in the market, what bothers me the most is that almost every premium HHKB is offered as an option, alongside full 60% and sometimes win keyless layouts. What this means is that in these keyboards, the HHKB blockers are added in as an afterthought, rather than integrated into the design from the beginning. Open up almost any HHKB keyboard, and you'll see on the PCB two unused slots for switches on the corners, which in my opinion is wasted engineering. My goal with the Summit was to create an HHKB exclusive keyboard with premium features but without the luxury price tag. Over the past several years, I've designed more keyboards than I can count, and in my experience, I believe that the process can be separated into four primary sections, planning, modeling, making it work, and assembly. With every project, you will always start off by planning. During this phase, you should be figuring out what are the core things you are trying to accomplish with the project. You should be asking yourself questions like, what layout do I want? Do I want to make a 10 keyless, 60% or even a 40%? Do I want my design to use a standard layout or do I want something custom? What mounting style will the keyboard have? Common mounting styles include the gasket mount, top mount, case mount or gummy o-ring mount. Do research on what your preferences are and it's a good idea to study existing keyboards to see how they come together. How will this be manufactured? For inexpensive, one-off DIY projects, 3D printing could be a good choice, but if you want something a little bit fancier, you can outsource your parts to get them CNC milled at a machine shop. Other manufacturing techniques include, but are not limited to, laser cut stacked acrylic, which can look really neat if executed well, or casting or molding, which are typically only viable for large quantities. For the summit, obviously I want my keyboard to be the HHKB layout, so I know it will fall under the 60% form factor. I decided on using the gummy o-ring mount not only because I like how it feels, but it is also simpler to design and manufacture as the geometry of the parts are less complex. I also decided that I ultimately want the keyboard to be CNC machined because one of my goals for the finished product is for it to be more premium. Now that I have these baseline criteria established, I can now move on to the physical design. For these next steps, I will primarily be using Fusion 360, which is my preferred CAD modeling tool because it is very powerful yet intuitive to use. I like to start off my modeling by first building what layout I want in an online tool called KLE, or Keyboard Layout Editor. From there, I copy the raw data and paste it straight into another online tool called the AI03 Plate Generator. This tool outputs a DXF file, which is essentially a 2D sketch of the base layout with proper key spacing and everything. This file is super useful as it makes a super convenient base to create my entire 3D design around. From here, it's entirely up to you how you want to go about modeling your design, but the important thing to keep in mind is how you want the whole thing to come together at the end. For me, I know that I want my keyboard to be gummy o-ring mounted, so the chassis will only need a single primary piece. I wanted to add in some brass weights in the design because having a bit of heft is essential for the keyboard to have that premium feel, and it adds a bit of nice accent color. 
Usually, adding weights into a keyboard instantly makes it significantly more expensive because it means more CNC parts that need to be manufactured. But in my case, I was able to figure out how to implement the weights without adding too much cost, and I accomplished this by designing the weights to be laser cut rather than CNC machined. Laser cut parts are a fraction of the cost of CNC parts because they are two dimensional instead of three dimensional. They also produce a lot less waste than CNC. In the summit, I decided to put a large external weight covering most of the bottom of the keyboard in addition to a secondary, smaller internal weight. As for the plate, gummy o-ring keyboards are about just as simple as they can get. The plate design is just a bare bones outline with cutouts for the switches. If you're starting from the DXF file from AI03's plate generator, 90% of the work is already done, so it makes this process very easy. Once the files were all finished up, I sent the files to a manufacturer to be CNC machined. Depending on who you go through, the parts can take as little as a week to as long as several months. With the physical design of the keyboard finished, I can now focus on figuring out how I want to make it function. In my opinion, if you are going with a relatively standard layout, it is easier to simply design your case around an existing PCB. But if you need something more unique, then you have two options. You can either handwire the keyboard, or you can design your own PCB. For one-off DIY keyboards, handwiring can be a solid option. Even though it's time consuming, it's still overall quicker and easier than designing your own PCB. But if you're trying to make something more premium, designing your own PCB is the way to go. One of the biggest benefits of designing your own is that you get a lot more freedom with your design. Rather than having your design be constrained around the existing PCB, you now have a lot more freedom because you can design the case and the PCB around each other simultaneously. The Summit is a prime example of this. I know I wanted to make a gummy o-ring mounted HHKB, but this is usually a paradox because if you're using a standard 60% PCB, it becomes impossible to implement HHKB blockers because the corners of the PCB would intersect with them. But because I'm designing my own PCB, I was able to notch my PCB to fit perfectly into the case. For PCB design, the most common program for keyboard enthusiasts to use is KiCad because there are readily available keyboard parts libraries for it, and it's free and open source as well. PCB design is very complex, but not impossible. For this video, there's far too many things to go over, but there are numerous guides created by the community that'll walk you through the process that I'll have linked in the description. Once I have the PCB files ready, they then need to get manufactured. My favorite PCB manufacturer is JLC PCB, who is actually the sponsor for this video. I've personally been using their services for most of my past projects, so I'm excited for this opportunity to get to work with them. I actually had my mint board PCBs from my previous video made through them, even before they sponsored me. Right now, they are promoting their 6 layer PCB printing. Even though for most keyboard projects, 2 layers is perfectly fine, their 6 layer PCBs can be super useful for more complex projects. An example use case for them could be if I ever wanted to fit an entire Raspberry Pi Zero and LCD screen into the mint board to make an entirely functional standalone pocket computer. I would need a very complex PCB to make this happen, and using JLC's 6 layer PCB service along with their free via in pad feature could make that project entirely doable. If you have any PCB projects that need to get printed, then I can't recommend JLC's speed and quality enough. Use the link in the description below to get $20 off your order and try their free via in pads. Thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Once the PCBs came in, the last thing I needed to do before doing the full keyboard build was to write the firmware for it. If you're using existing PCBs, they should be pre-programmed, but when you design your own, this is one extra step that you have to deal with. My PCB is set up to have a standard wired setup, which is the simplest and most straightforward to deal with. I will be using QMK for this keyboard, which is the most popular option because of its wide compatibility and complete documentation. As with the PCB design, writing the firmware is also far beyond the scope of this video, but fortunately thanks to QMK's documentation, setting up the firmware is relatively straightforward. Once the firmware is all set up, all that's left to do is plug in the PCB and flash the firmware and hope it works. Once you verify everything's working as intended, it's finally time to build up the keyboard. Fast forward a few weeks, and my CNC chassis, laser cut brass weights, the PCBs, and the plates have all been delivered. 
I decided to have the chassis manufactured out of polycarbonate to give it a transparent effect. I really like how it turned out because the transparency allows for a deeper appreciation of the design as it shows the amount of thought that goes into it inside and out. Some designers design their products to only look nice from the outside, but once you open them up, you can just see cut corners everywhere. I don't agree with this thinking, and my philosophy is that the best designs show thought and effort put not only into the external appearance, but also the internal workings. For the summit, I wanted to make three different builds with different plates and switches to give me the ability to swap configurations on the fly. I decided to do a linear build using Oil King switches on a polycarbonate plate, a heavy tactile build using Moyu black switches on a brass plate, and a light tactile build using cherry brown switches also on a polycarbonate plate. I think having these three diversely different builds allows me to keep things fresh for when I get tired of what. I've learned a lot throughout the process of creating this keyboard. One of the biggest things I've learned about the design process is that it's an unreal expectation to achieve perfection after just one or a handful of tries, but with each iteration things will inevitably get better and better. In the future, I may even be interested in selling a batch of the summits. Just to test waters, I've put together an interest check form in the description below, and if you potentially might be interested in purchasing one of these in the future, I would really appreciate it if you take a minute to fill it out. Without further ado, here's the sound test of the summit, and as always, thanks for watching.